Hello and welcome to Best Laid Plans. Today is part four of the oil can series where we will be making the pump inlet mechanism. The complete pump is made of a piston in between two one-way valves. The inlet mechanism contains the first one-way valve and a piston to move the fluid and the second one-way valve is located in the outlet mechanism. So let's take a look at the completed inlet assembly and see how it works. On the intake stroke, the piston draws fluid through the hole and around the ball bearing at the far left of the drawing. The piston is now primed and ready to send the fluid to the outlet housing and through the second one-way valve. On the exhaust stroke, the ball bearing blocks the entry hole, forcing the fluid to flow out of the hole partway up the body, which is connected to the outlet housing. As you can see here, the outlet housing has a similar ball bearing valve, which prevents the fluid from flowing backwards through the pump. Now that we understand the mechanics of how the pump works, let's have a look at the components that we shall be manufacturing today. The inlet mechanism contains six distinct parts and we will need to manufacture four of them. The list of the parts are the plunger or piston, the spring, the hat, the plunger gland nut, the plunger body and the ball bearing. As you can imagine, there are a few critical dimensions. The first being the thread at the top of the piston, which will connect to the thread in the hat. The second is that the piston body is a good sliding fit in the gland nut. And the third is that the piston is a good sliding fit inside the inlet housing. Because we want this to be as leak free as possible, we will polish the piston and we will ream the hole which the piston slides in as well. We will need to make an accurate valve seat to ensure the ball bearing seals the valve. And there's also a thread between the gland nut and the inlet housing, which also needs to be true. Okay, so now that we understand the plans, let's head over to the lathe and we'll start machining our first part, which will be the hat for the piston. We're using some 12 mil brass round bar, which will be turned down to the correct dimensions as per the plans. So the first operation we'll do will be to drill a small center hole in the bar, and this will be threaded to fit onto the piston rod. The thread size and therefore the drill that I'm using is slightly different to what's on the plans, but that was what I had available at the time. Next up, I machined the small rebate for the spring to sit inside and then fashioned the rest of the hat as per the design. Now that I've got the hat to the correct dimensions, it was just a case of setting the compound slides at the correct angle and then parting off the finished hat. Oh, there. As you know, it's always good to neaten off the end of your bar stock so that it's ready for its next operation. That's the hat complete. We'll set that to one side and now we'll make a start on the piston rod. I did realize later that it's better to make the piston to fit the cylinder. However, I've done it the wrong way around this time. So completely ignoring that previous point, I mounted some 3 16 mild steel bar in the chuck. That's 4.76 millimeters in real units and turned the threaded part down to the correct dimensions. This was then threaded using the correct die to match what had been threaded into the hat. I gave the threads a quick clean with the brush and then tested the two parts fit together correctly. I then used the opportunity to give the hat a bit of a polish just to make that finish a little bit nicer.
Once I was happy with the finish, I removed the parts from the chuck and made a start on the gland nut. The gland nut is made from a length of one quarter inch or 6.3 millimeter brass hex bar. And this was turned down to a diameter of 4.2 millimeters and threaded 3BA. Once I checked the threads and was happy, I chamfered the end and then I drilled the center hole and reamed it to 2.5 millimeters in diameter. As you can see here, I actually reamed the hole to the wrong size the first time and that became apparent pretty quickly. So I re-drilled the hole and then re-reamed it the correct size. I then cut a small relief at the top of the threads, slightly chamfered the top edge before parting off the completed piston gland nut. Oh, oh, bing! As you can see, there is a small burr at the top, which was just removed with a piece of sandpaper. So next, I flipped back to the piston rod and gave the gland nut a quick test fit. It fit okay, but wasn't great. Luckily, the order I machined the parts is about to be put right by the universe. After this gentle nudge in the right direction, I remachined the piston rod, first turning down the thinner part before finally bringing the piston to dimension. You can see here that I actually machined it in two stages and that's because the length of the rod is quite long compared to the diameter and I was getting a lot of deflection. Once I checked the length, I then parted it off and flipped it round in the chuck to neaten up the other end. I gave the piston a quick polish so that it would be a nice fit inside the valve housing. So the last part to be machined is the inlet housing body. This is a very slightly more complex part as it has the threaded section at the top, the reamed part in the middle before finally the reduced diameter hole which forms the inlet hole and the valve seat for the ball bearing. First I centre drilled the rod and then drilled it to the correct diameter and then tapped it 3BA. I gave the gland nut a quick test fit and I hadn't threaded it deep enough. So I drilled the middle section and the inlet hole and valve seat as well. I then made the gland nut threads deeper, which enabled it to fully screw into place. I turned the outside diameter down to the correct size of five millimeters.
Once I'd completed all the above operations, I then reamed the center part of the valve body to three millimeters. I checked the length and then parted it off. I then flipped it round in the chuck and neatened up the other end. The final operation is to drill the outlet hole in the side of the inlet housing and this could have been done very simply in the drill however I decided it would be a great idea to crack out the vertical milling attachment and do the drilling on the lathe. This took ages and it would have been way quicker just doing it in the drill. But it worked quite well and I now have all the parts which you can see me assembling here. And that is it, that is the complete pump inlet mechanism. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. And don't forget, you can support Best Lathe Plans completely free by simply clicking that subscribe button. It tells YouTube that you like my content and it helps promote the videos to a wider audience. And with the shameless plug out the way, I will see you in part five, where I promise we will complete the oil can. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next video.